Today I'm going to be reviewing the MoveSpeed Ray X20 1TB external USB SSD. This SSD is branded as one of the fastest external USB SSDs on the market with speeds of over 2000 megabytes per second and today I'm going to see how well that claim holds up in my performance testing as well as take a look at the drive and the insides of it. As a disclaimer, this drive is provided to me by MoveSpeed for the purpose of this review, but all of this testing and thoughts are those of my own. Let's first take a look at what comes in the box. Along with the drive itself comes a relatively short USB-C to C cable that's capable of utilizing the full speeds of the drive, and the drive itself. The drive is a very sturdy metal feeling drive with actually a good amount of weight in the hand. And on the drive itself, there's lots of little cutouts in plastic that allow for RGB LEDs to shine through that have kind of a glowing RGB pattern that cycle through colors slowly. These lights are actually pretty darn bright, so even in a relatively bright environment like what I'm filming in right now, it still shines quite brightly. This can be a little bit annoying if you're in a dark room where it's pretty bright, especially since there's no way to control these RGB LEDs. No physical switch or software that's able to turn them off or change the colors to a solid one if the user wanted to. If you want to take a look at the inside of the drive, there's four hex heads on the bottom of the drive that can be removed, and then the bottom panel pops right out. Taking a look at the inside of the drive, you can see the little PCB that contains all of the SSD components. This does not appear to have any thermal pad or connection to the outside of the drive casing at all, but in my testing, I didn't see any thermal throttling or anything that would indicate the drive was overheating, so it seems like that wasn't a concern here. On this board contains two little NAND packages that contain all of the data itself. I'm guessing these are 512GB TLC NAND chips along with a Silicon Micron SM2320G controller. This controller is actually a native USB controller, which means it connects directly to USB to those NAND chips, unlike older controllers where they might have been a SATA or NVMe controller with a separate USB to SATA or NVMe controller. And this controller is designed for the ground up for applications just like this drive, 20 gigabit USB straight to NAND flash. The rest of this drive contains a little PCB that has all the RGB LEDs itself on it and the little circuitry required to pulse them slowly, as well as some plastic that likely helps with the light passing through to the externals of the drive. Before I take a look at the performance of this drive, I want to make a quick note about USB and USB speeds. This is a USB 20 gigabit drive or a USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 drive. Typically only the newest current platforms have this standard, but it's likely going to be more common in the future. The annoying thing with USB is this is labeled quite poorly, and a lot of systems might only say USB 3.2, which might refer to the slower speeds as well, or some systems have Thunderbolt, which is 40 gigabit, but only support USB 10 gigabit for speeds. So if you're not getting the full speeds and want to make sure that your system is capable of getting the full speeds, double check that your system actually says USB 20 gigabit or 3.2 Gen 2. Otherwise, you're going to see slower speeds. Now let's get into the performance testing of this drive itself. I started with running a Crystal Diskmark benchmark. That's where it's easy to compare to another drive you might have and just compare it to other drives on the market. And just for reference, here's a comparison of Crystal Diskmark on this drive in a 10 gigabit system and a 5 gigabit system so you can see how it's affected. Primarily the sequential speeds are going to fall but the random speeds stay relatively similar on these slower USB ports on the system. Now let's take a look at a little bit more of my in-depth testing using FIO and Linux to run artificial benchmark, as this gives me a better feel of how this drive will perform in specific workloads to see what it might struggle in or do well in. The first thing I did was sequential read and write workloads. Reads wise, this drive did very well, going over two gigabytes per second for the full duration of the drive, even if it's completely filled with data, with no slowdowns I could find. Writes wise, this drive definitely has an SLC cache that once filled will drop in speed to the slower speed of the drive. If the drive is empty, the SLC cache is about 340 gigabytes. That's a bit under a third of the total drive capacity, making me think it uses TLC NAND internally. But as the drive fills up, this SLC buffer will get smaller. So when the drive is fully filled, the buffer is only about 25 gigs of writing at full speed before the drive speed drops. And when filling the drive with files from completely empty, I saw an average speed of 360 megabytes per second. And while these write speeds are far from the highest possible speeds on these drives, they're still more than good enough for using it for something like a camera recording drive, where it's capable of writing ProRes 422HQ, 60 FPS in UHD for the whole duration of the drive without running into any write speed limitations. Now let's take a look at random IO in this drive. 
And I'm guessing this drive's random I.O. is limited by the nature of being a USB drive and it being a higher overhead standard with lower IOPS compared to something like an internal NVMe drive. But it's still not bad by any means, with relatively comparable to a SATA SSD in most random workloads. So if you wanted to use it as something like a Windows to go drive or something to boot from, it's still going to perform very well in most workloads. It also worked just fine for something like a game drive, and it's going to be more than fast enough for loading almost all games quite quickly off of it. Taking a look at some performance tests, I can see it stands up pretty well. One other thing I want to say that's pretty good of this drive is the performance doesn't drop that much when the drive is full. A lot of drives will see a relatively significant performance drop off when the drive is full versus empty and I didn't see that much of it here on this drive. Overall, this drive's random performance is pretty decent and it seems to be about as good as you can get out of USB. So this is one of the top tier USB drives if you want a USB 20 gigabit. And the only real way today you're getting faster performance than a drive like this is using Thunderbolt, which will give you better performance and likely lower overhead, but means a Thunderbolt compatible system. One great thing with using USB on this drive means it works with even old USB 2 systems if you want to use that every once in a while. I think this drive is a pretty good with no major shortcomings performance wise, and it seems to be built pretty well with a cool glowing light if you like that, although it's a bit bright and potentially annoying for some workloads. Let me know what you think of a drive like this in the comments below, and thanks for watching this video.